Welcome to Travels in France with me, Steve Higgins. This is Folkestone and here we are leaving the UK, travelling under the English Channel on Eurotunnel. Tunnel. Before I ever travelled on Euro Tunnel, I pictured a road in a tunnel under the channel and a short drive to France. In actual fact, cars and wagons drive onto specially made trains which haul us through the tunnel and across to France. The trains are so very smooth and quiet, there is only the faintest perception of movement. However, 35 minutes later, here we are, arriving in Calais. Just for some information, the, the tunnel is 31.4 miles long and was built at a cost of £4.65 billion and took six years to construct. On this trip, we'll be staying in a rented house, a gîte, in the French village of Parcé le Pam. That's a little graphic showing our route, travelling south through France to our eventual destination. And here we are in the village of Parce le Pain. Got one small shop, which was that we, we went past on the right hand side there. There's a rather nice memorial to those who lost their lives in the Great War. And of course, there's a village bar, which is this place uh, shuttered up on the right hand side. Strangely enough, it's it's run by uh, an English couple the day we went there they had a fish and chips on offer and we were just wondering what it was going to be like a French version of fish and chips but it was actually the English fish and chips here we are arriving at our gîte uh, it's a little bit of a tight maneuver down this little lane to get to the gîte there is an entrance at the other end uh, but actually this was the the better entrance the very dodgy bit is getting between these two trees right at the end and here's me just trying to manoeuvre the car through those trees. A little bit of a squeeze. Check those mirrors. Looks like we managed to get through. And here we are arriving at our jeet. Down there, that's the house on the right hand side. And over on the left there is a rather splendid pool. So what have we here? A nice little relaxation area. Perfect place for a late evening whiskey and dry as the sun drops down. A perfect spot to watch local bats flit about as darkness descends. Here's my favourite uh, relaxation area, the pool. I don't think there is any nicer feeling than to take a dip in a swimming pool than after a few lengths return to your sun lounger and lie there peacefully while the hot sun dries your body. You can feel little rivulets of water dripping away and in time the sun will gradually dry you. It's almost like a sort of rebirth or at least a refreshing of the soul. A few minutes to dry off and then it's back to my book, which on this occasion was a Patricia Cornwell thriller. In fact, it was Port Mortuary. I reviewed it as part of my holiday book bag series. Not a great book, but certainly a nice relaxing uh, poolside read. Anyway, taking the camera back over here just to get another view of the house. Uh, it is such a lovely place. But there is, of course, one vital thing that no self-respecting Englishman can do without, even on holiday. Yes. Everything stops for tea. Of course, Liz and I don't spend the entire holiday by the pool. We do venture out occasionally, particularly at the weekends. French towns close at 12 midday on the dots. Shops close. The only places open are the restaurants because nothing, and I mean nothing, interferes with the French lunch. Nothing. Everywhere shuts down till about 2 p.m. Okay, I've noticed in recent years there are supermarkets that have started to stay open, which is a good thing for us UK tourists. It's a great time to shop. Even in the late afternoons, French villages are still and quiet. UK villages are full of people, cars, traffic, and kids. So where do all the French kids go? Why aren't they kicking balls about in the middle of the street like normal kids? Why aren't they riding up and down on their bikes? Where do the people go and what are they doing? If you know the answer, please let me know. This is what we need to do. Not so long ago on the BBC, there was a pretty interesting documentary about cats. The BBC team wired up all the cats in a particular village, had cameras and tracking devices on the cats, and worked out what the cats did, where they did it, and in fact the whole pattern of their behaviour. What the BBC need to do for the follow-up programme is to attach cameras and GPS tracking to a village of French people and report the results as soon as possible. We need to know. 
Here we are crossing over the Loire, uh, going towards one of my favourite towns, a town called Saumur. Now, uh, Saumur's in quite an interesting position. It <coughs> straddles the Loire, but there's like a little island in the middle of it. So that was us going over to the island, and this is us going over to the second part of the uh, uh, the town. Now, Saumur is, is a very touristy place, and one of the things that to a certain extent annoys me in uh, France in in the countryside there's nothing much happens on a Friday and Saturday night French people don't go out at night it's the English tourists that do however in Saumur there is actually some nightlife you can go into a restaurant in the evening and find it full of people which is obviously very nice indeed um, that big building on the right hand side used to be the tourist office I'm not 100% certain if it is the tourist office nowadays this is a wonderful town and the destination for a great many tourists as you can see by the coaches there which brought uh, a coach load of tourists in no doubt another fascinating aspect of uh, some of is this wonderful castle or chateau i visited it many times and uh, i don't have a great deal of pictures of it although i did manage to get it on this shot going up towards the tunnel An actual destination on this day was uh, not somewhere old, but the Pousse at Montsoreau. Now Montsoreau is a town just further along the Loire and I think it's the second Saturday of every month they have a great um, antiques fair. Now some of these pictures, i got to admit, are not actually from Montsoreau, but uh, they show you the general mood of what happens at uh, Montsoreau. Be prepared to pay a great deal of money for things that you could find elsewhere, slightly cheaper prices. But there's uh, huge tables of antiques, of paintings and all kinds of bits and pieces. As you can see, it's all by the side of the Loire, which is a really wonderful setting. There's some more pictures. I also find quite a great deal of uh, antique telephones, which is something that I particularly like. This is one that I picked up, not at Montsoreau, I've got to admit, because uh, it is expensive there. Obviously, lots of old cameras, because the days of the film camera are actually long gone. Anyway, that was our trip to Montsoreau lovely uh, antique festival however time is coming where we're getting a little bit hungry and i've got my eyes on that barbecue back home anyway first i'm going to talk about wine and uh, one of the things you'll see as you drive through france is all these huge vineyards because of course one of the great exports from france is the wonderful wine they make there but of course what they've got to do first is cultivate the grapes in order to, to produce beautiful wine I have to say, I am a great uh, wine drinker, but um, for me personally, I like cheap wine. I like wine that's quaffable, tasty, and that you can drink a great deal of it. So expensive, uh, strong wines are not necessarily uh, my bag. Anyway, we're making a visit here to a place called Douy La Fontaine. And we're going to visit our favourite bar, which is just ahead there on the right, which is run by a lady called Julie. And uh, we always go and see Julie every year uh, the only thing is she's a little bit camera shy didn't like having a picture taken so i didn't take any pictures inside the bar at all Dooley fontaine is a, a lovely town we've stayed here many times and again it's one of those places where there's a lot of restaurants but nothing much happens uh, on a, of an evening come here on saturday afternoon and you find all the restaurants chocking Come here on Monday afternoon and this entire parking area to the left is covered with stalls and stuff for the local markets and all kinds of produce. Anyway, time to move on and get that barbecue ready. Been stuck behind this uh, this large load convoy exceptional and finally getting past it as we come onto the dual carriageway. And it's time to put my foot down, get us back home, and get that barbecue started. However, on the way we get stopped by the uh, the train which is coming across us, so we've got to stop for a short while, let the train go past. And there it goes. There is a great train network in France. I have to say, not a great local train network, but if you want to do a, a great deal of long distance travel, there is a fabulous uh, long distance network of French trains. The French, it seems to me, are very reliant on their motor cars for local transport. Uh, in Douai, there was a bus service. Uh, for instance, you get the bus to Saumur, but uh, this only runs twice a day. So if you miss the one coming back, obviously you completely goose because that was it. Anyway, here we are back at home, and I'm going to park the car up. And uh, this is it. this was actually the the other entrance, which is a little bit uh, I think it's more difficult to get in, to be honest with you, especially if you've got to do a three point turn to come back on yourself. That's it. 
Anyway, as I say, barbecue time. Barbecues are something synonymous with summer and summer holidays. As the afternoon melts subtly into evening and the salad is all prepared, it's time to decant some wine and light the coals. The stop hitting as the steaks or burgers hit the grill is particularly satisfying and nothing goes better with a steak than a glass of red wine that's had time to breathe and has been gently warmed in the sun. Throw in some crisp lettuce leaves, ripe tomatoes and onions and some olive oil. Perfect. Of course, all of this finally come to an end and here we are going into Com, ready to board our ferry and return home to the UK. After three or four weeks of relaxation, it's always kind of sad to, uh, to be going home, but at least I always have a few blog post ideas, uh, they're fully written or similar away in the back of my mind. So at least back in the UK, I won't be struggling for a new blog post idea, well, at least not for a few weeks. There are plenty more videos here on my YouTube page. If you'd like more information and more videos, go to my website where you'll find a weekly blog post every Saturday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time at stevebegginslive.com.